What's up, agents? How y'all doing? Today, I'm bringing you some bleed build variations. We'll just see what we can do to maximize our bleed damage in any given variation. I wanted to thank all of you guys who subscribed to the channel, checking out my work. Thank you guys who have been commenting, giving me ideas, what I can do better, new build ideas I can try. It's really because of you guys that I'm able to create these new ideas think outside of the box and really see what sort of cool little variations that we can get into in this game to just make the gameplay a little more interesting. So without further ado, let's get right on into it. All right, agents. So as far as the specialization, we are going to go ahead and go with the technician. Now there's other variations you can use, but I like this for a myriad of reasons. The number one reason I like it is for the amp, which will give us the plus one skill tier. That lets us either have one weapon core or one armor core where we otherwise wouldn't. That allows us to do a little bit more weapon damage or gives us a little more survivability. Because we are going to be either using the Artificer Hive to test the maximum damage or for the actual gameplay, we'll be using the Stinger Hive for the actual bleed effect that it applies we will go ahead and take advantage of the Faraday field. This means ourselves and any of our teammates that are within five meters of our hive will be immune to shock or disrupt. We also will take advantage of the overclock CPU. This will give us an additional 10% skill damage on top of everything else we already have. We'll get some dismantling. This will help to cause some additional damage to robotics, proxies, and any sort of inorganic material. This will also give us the advantage of having the link laser pointer that if you are running spotter or any of your teammates is running spotter, you have a way of applying the pulse to targets without actually having to have the pulse skill applied. All right, before we talk about the skills, let's talk about other ways that we have of applying bleed. Starting with weapons. The easiest way is to run the carnage with perfect sadist. This will allow you to apply bleed after killing three enemies. The next enemy you hit, you apply bleed to. Also, you do 25% bonus weapon damage to bleeding enemies. So this synergizes really well with the build if we weren't trying to hit maximum damage. For standard gameplay, this might be a go-to weapon for you, particularly if you like LMGs. As far as gear, you have the Ridgeway's exotic chest piece, and this will allow you to cause bleed simply by shooting enemies. The downside is, is this bleed is fairly weak. The good news is, if you decide to use this with the bleed build, then any enemies with their, which are within range that are bleeding, regardless of how you cause the bleed, you will get that healing. So there's a huge amount of sustainability if you have uh, five or more guys around you and you're getting half your life back every second half your armor back. And since we're running glass cannon that's on the chest piece, we obviously can't run glass cannon and ridgeways. But it should be noted that if you like ridgeways, if you like the way it plays, if you like the healing, it is a viable option. You have the ability to apply a bleed from the ongoing directive gear set. If you kill an enemy while it's under a status effect, you will get hollow point ammo. That hollow point ammo affects, it applies a bleed and effectively multiplies damage as well. So that's a good one, but of course you have to run the four-piece ongoing directive for that. There's the trauma chest piece, which if you shoot an enemy in the chest, I believe it is, you cause bleed. Um, that's one way of doing it. However, this is a very ineffective way. I don't recommend the trauma chest piece. So really what it comes down to is what skills can you use to apply bleed? Well, of course we're gonna be using the Stinger Hive. This is one of the most effective ways of applying a bleed. Uh, and the Stinger Hive is great because it can be used as both an offensive or a defensive weapon. For our testing, we're going to be using the Explosive Seeker Mine. It is, it is a very effective, very easy way to apply bleed to a group of enemies. We'll also be looking at the shrapnel trap. The shrapnel trap can apply bleed as well. There's one other type of bleed that we can access through the artillery turret, which means we have to run demolitionist, which means you're stuck running either all six skill tier or five skill tier and the card TDI pistol if you want to access the artillery turret. 
this is its own dedicated play style. And right up above, there should be the link to my full-on max damage explosive build. There's much better ways of running the turret. You, your bleed will do much more damage this way simply because of the amount of damage that you're going to put out anyway. So if you want to run the artillery turret, use that build. All right, so that's it for our methods to apply bleed and the skills that we will be using. Last thing to note is we will use the artificer hive in the gun range simply to get the highest numbers we can get solo. All right, as far as the weapons go, as always, use whatever you think is the best weapon, whatever fits your playstyle best. But to maximize this build, we will go with a couple different combinations. Now, of course, running with the Everlasting Gaze will give you the perfect perpetuation. This will allow you to proc perpetuation every 16 seconds versus the 20 second cooldown of the standard perpetuation. This will give you that 50% additional bonus duration and damage to the next applied status effect. And it should be noted that both with Creeping Death along with the indirect transmission, if the character that you hit is the one that spreads that, that perpetuation will actually be spread to all the targets. So it doesn't affect only one target, it will affect them all. So it can be very beneficial if you are using Eclipse Protocol or if you are running with Creeping Death. Scorpio, of course, is a great weapon for any status effect build as it applies status effects in and of itself. Plus, when they finally have that septic shock applied, they get that 20% bonus damage from all sources. It's a fairly finicky perk, and I've noticed that a lot of times it doesn't actually seem to work. Uh, this may be very well due to the fact that most status effects snapshot their damage right when the status effect is applied, and it seems the only thing that tends to change the amount of damage that you do after the effect is applied is whether damage to armor is present or not. So there's a cool trick that you can use to actually maximize your damage with that simply by uh, applying perpetuation and then shifting over to say the Scorpio that has the plus 12% damage to armor, you will see your damage numbers increase simply by doing that one minor step. And lastly, for your sidearm, you can use anything you want. Really, my favorite sidearm to run with is to run with something with Future Perfect. Uh, what this will do is allow you to have an overcharge. Another interesting option would be to use the Car TDI Custom, the name pistol, that also gives you plus one skill tier. And if you wanted to, say, roll Perpetuation onto your card, you could run with two armor, two weapon core, or one weapon core, one armor, and only run with four of the skill tiers and still be able to hit skill tier six due to the amped and the card plus one skill tier. So just food for thought if you don't mind running with a pistol as your primary weapon. Probably the easiest way to run this for actual gameplay is to figure out what your favorite weapon is. In my case, I prefer automatic weapons, either an LMG or an assault rifle. Just get the standard perpetuation on it. In my case, this Police M4 works great. It has a super high rate of fire. I can easily apply perpetuation with this. And this just makes it an easy weapon that I can use all the time if I don't want to be switching weapons. And I don't want to have to effectively work to maximize all of my damage all the time. All right, agents, as far as the gear, we're going to try three simple build variations. We're going to try a full high-end build. We are going to try an Eclipse Protocol version. And lastly, we will try an ongoing directive build. All right, agents, first off, let's check out this high-end build. As I will predict, and we will see if this is true, I assume that we will see the highest numbers, damage numbers that we can get using the high-end build, simply because we could stack the most amount of skill damage and status effects. Uh, but I think for actual gameplay uh, and ease of use in the open world, in missions, um, and the summit and such, I think that either the Eclipse Protocol, because it will spread the status effects, will be better than this. Or, who knows, maybe even the ongoing directive will be better uh, as an actual run and gun. But, I suspect that we will see the highest damage numbers with this. So, what does this look like? 
First of all, the brand sets. We're running one piece of golden for the status effects. This piece, you notice we have the skill damage and status effect on it. Uh, and because we're running the technician, we have 170,000 armor rolled. You could, of course, roll that into weapon damage if you want. But as always, I do not like to be as squishy when I'm using glass cannon, so I like to have over 900,000 armor. We are running two pieces of the Wyvern War. This will give us the skill damage and the status effects. We're running two pieces of Haunting You for the skill haste and the skill damage. And we are running one piece of Murakami because the brand set bonus of skill duration is the only place that it will actually affect the bleed duration, but this does affect it by quite a bit. So I do recommend running the Murakami. You will notice every single piece is skill damage and status effects. All of our mod slots are skill haste, but you can put whatever you want in there. Uh, you can put life on kill, uh, protection from elites, hazard protection. Uh, you can add some crit hit chance in there if you want to. Uh, do as you will there. So for this build, like all of them, we are of course are running the same glass cannon chest piece. Uh, but we are going to be going with the Hanayu Force Multiplier. Skill damage, status effects on it. But the big one is we're looking for that perfect combined arms. Shooting an enemy increases total skill damage by 30% for 3 seconds. So this is a very short window, but this is the maximum amount of damage that we can receive from the backpack. This will heal us the highest damage of any of the skills we have on the backpack with the full high-end build. You guys will notice that we have a base damage of 86,500 for this. All right, it's just, I do quickly want to note that the absolute optimal version of this build would be to run the one piece of Golan, two pieces of Wyvern, two pieces of Haunted You with skill damage and status effects, and then run the Memento instead of running Murakami. This will get you the maximum damage I think we can get with a Hexotic build. Ultimately, if I could get this Haunted You mask with skill damage and status effects on it, if you have all 30 stacks and the short-term buff active, this, I believe, would yield the highest numbers in the game. All right, next, let's check out the Eclipse Protocol version. So, as always, we are going to use the Wyvern Glass Cannon chest piece, skill damage, status effects. So there's two different backpacks I'll run, uh, both will I burn. I will either run this Creeping Death if I want to make sure that I can initially apply the bleed around to everybody. Uh, this means when we apply a status effect, it immediately is applied to all enemies within 8 meters of that target. The other backpack I will use... Since we're running with the Scorpio, I will also run with this Wyvern with Opportunistic. Status effect skill damage on it, but Opportunistic, since we're using the Scorpio shotgun, enemies you have with a shotgun and marksman rifles applies the damage they take by 10% from all sources for 5 seconds. So if I'm running in a group, yeah, it's cool to get an immediate spread of status effects, but this is an ability, this is a talent that I can use to... Uh, increase my damage multiplicatively, but not only that, this is great against tanks. If you're in Legendary and those big tanks are coming, the additional multiplicative 10% damage that everybody can do through any means is huge. Now, you compound that with the fact that we're using Scorpio, which also with the seventh shot will apply a 20%. That means we have, I'm not sure, I'd have to do some accurate damage testing, but essentially that's 30% additional damage everybody is doing to that target if both those uh, debuffs are active at the same time. But for this build and for this video, we will go ahead and just run the Creeping Death. Eclipse Protocol, the two-piece, just like the ongoing directive, the two-piece gives us 15% status effects, three-piece gives us the 15% skill haste and 30% hazard protection, and then the big dog we're looking for is that four-piece indirect transmission. Your status effects now spread on kill to all enemies within 10 meters and refresh 50% of the duration. We have status effects on every one of these pieces. You'll notice because we're running Technician, it allows me to run the 170,000 armor on this holster simply because we can still maintain skill tier 6, right? So 
I opted for that. You could also, if you want to get some weapon damage, you could roll that into the 15% weapon damage just to boost that a little bit as well. Uh, leave it up to you guys. I like it just because I don't like to be squishy. And running glass cannon, when you're up against those uh, the juggernauts in Legendary, the hives on their backpacks can take you down super fast with glass cannons. So I do recommend running the bonus armor, but do whatever you're going to do. And as you can see, we got a base bleed of 72,000 here. All right, so the ongoing directive version of this build is a very interesting version. So, of course, we are going to use the Wyvernware glass cannon chest piece with the skill damage status effects. We are going to use knee pads, and you could substitute this with the mask, the holster, or the gloves if you need to, depending on your RNG. Uh, but we so we're running two piece wyvern with status effects and skill damage on both So the ongoing directive two piece gives us an additional 15% status effects the three piece gives us 30% reload speed the four piece is really what we're looking for rules of engagement Killing a status effective enemy grants hollow point ammo for your active weapon Hollow point ammo amplifies weapon damage by 20% and applies bleed on hit so that weapon damage only applies to you actually shooting. It does not apply to the bleed itself, unfortunately. Uh, however, the thing to note, uh, the first part is killing status affected enemy grants hollow point ammo. Uh, however they die, if they die from your bleed, if they die from a barrel that explodes and they die from fire, uh, whatever weapon you're holding in your hand, you will get that hollow point ammo for. So one thing is, is, as a group of enemies is dying from the bleed, you could rotate through your weapons, and each kill will give hollow point ammo to each weapon. So that's one way, uh, right out the gate, you can make sure to have hollow point for all of your weapons. Now, you guys notice we are using the actual ongoing directive backpack instead of using a high-end backpack, and that's because it comes with the talent trauma specialist. And this is huge. This is the only reason why the ongoing directive currently is one of the better ways to run bleed builds. And that's because it increases the duration of our bleed status effects by an additional 50% and all of our bleed damage done by an additional 100%. And that additional is big. So when I say 100%, that's on top of the uh, status effect and skill damage that we already have stacked uh, that's on top of the duration that we already get so this does suffer from diminishing returns but as you guys see this does give us the highest base damage for our bleed of any of these builds the question is will this yield the highest ultimate damage if we're going for a maximum damage test let's find out all right, let's see, without, without overcharge. So it does less damage when I'm on overcharge. That's twice in a row. What the fuck? Okay, 164, but watch this. All right. Now, we're not going to do that. We're just, we're not. Let's do this.
We saw a 203 there for a second. Now we're at 198. So check it out. Why do we do more? Okay, we're going to... I'm going to hang out for just another... Uh, yeah, dude, we're going to wait for another overcharge. Just because I want to see. Because So we dropped from 198 uh, to damage to the health after armor's gone. We're doing 198,000. But we're doing only 164,000 if there is overcharge. Okay, now, okay, that that's a little weirder. Why did we, huh? Dude, something's weird, dudes. That didn't make any sense on that one. All right, I'll just wait for this to bleed out. Okay, it's still good. All right, so it looks like I see what's happening. The overcharge busts the explosion, but it doesn't affect the bleed at all. Now, why it did only 164,000 those two times, I don't know, but food for thought. Look to see what happens when you guys play. Um, it may be that uh, there's some weird thing with the coding. I don't know. Anyway, moving on. All right, for the Eclipse Protocol variation, while I would recommend running either the Creeping Death or the Opportunistic version of the backpack for actual gameplay, so just for damage testing purposes, what happens if we lose out on a little bit of damage, right? And we go, we lose out on the status effects rather, but we add in the combined arms. So it spreads. All right, here we go. So overcharge does not change the bleed damage at all. Let's check out some ongoing directive. All right, so this ongoing directive, I was only able to get 9.3. So what's that? That's, okay, we're 0.7 off, 2.7 off, 2, 2.7, 3.7, 4.6. So we're 4.6 percent off of max status effects right now all right so it's really not that much i thought it was more than that uh this build is is fucking ridiculous all right check this out without me doing anything right we're just gonna come up here and let's just all right you know what we're not even gonna proc perpetuation at first let's just go ahead watch this Not bad, right? Kicks it up to four, 140 when we had the Scorpio. That's because of the plus 12% damage to armor. But look at how long that bleed lasts, right? Come on, dude, go. So that's without having to put it in. And look at how long. Dude, again, look at that bleed. <laughs> Let's hope all this works out. Let's go for max damage.
So what's up with that, right? Doesn't change the damage at all. The other thing is with the ammo, you should be able to easily apply bleed to a lot of different people, right? Keep that, keep that stuff going. And the hollow point ammo actually gives you ammo too, so this is a way of making sure that you never really run out of ammo. I haven't gotten the ammo crate the whole time. And let me see, what happens if I fire all this off? I bet you I have, I have over 800 rounds. Dude, I, I'm basically full. So as you guys can see, the damage numbers seem to vary greatly with the ongoing directive and not for any real reason a lot of the time. But this is a damn powerful build. All right, Agents, I figured I'd just give you a quick little rundown of what each of these three builds brings to the table. So the high-end version, we're looking at 90% static skill damage bonus, 130% status effects, 10% skill haste, and 70% skill duration. This is taking into account both the perfect perpetuation uh, as well as the overclock CPU. As far as the Eclipse Protocol set, running either two pieces of Wyvern or Eclipse Protocol and one Wyvern, one GL, it will net you a static 40% skill damage, 135% status effects, and 15% skill haste, not to mention the fact that it will spread your status effects around every time an enemy dies. So there's a lot of utility in that. Now as far as the ongoing directive, running either two Wyvern or one Wyvern and one GL, it nets you a static 40% skill damage, 135% status effects, 30% faster reload speed, and a 1.2 multiplier for the bleed damage. Now notice that this multiplier itself is only for the hollow point, uh, hollow point ammo bleed, uh, but that still is a multiplier. We still have the glass cannon. And one thing to note, if we throw in the backpack, that does, uh, that 100% bonus bleed damage is applied to any bleed, not just the hollow point ammo. And that 50% bleed duration is applied to any bleed. So although the multiplicative damage that we get from ongoing directive is only for the hollow point ammo, the, uh, the backpack does add a lot of additional damage to any form of bleeds through both the direct damage and the duration bonus. And just... So you guys are clear the way I got the maximum damage. I was utilizing the perfect perpetuation. I was utilizing the artificer hive. I was utilizing an overcharge through future perfect. And uh, we were using the perfect combined arms for the uh, high end build, which netted us the maximum uh, bleed, which registered in at 203,000 per tick. Uh, unfortunately, by that point, we had done so much damage that we only got a few ticks before the armor was gone, and that dropped to the 198,000 per tick we got to their direct health. So, uh, nice. We are able to hit over 200K, and if I am able to get that number up, we will come out with a follow-up video on it. Otherwise, let's check out this gameplay.
All right, agents, I wanted to thank you for making it this far if you got to this point. If you haven't already, do me a favor, smash that like button for me. If I haven't earned your subscription, hopefully today is the day. If you guys think this is worthwhile, please share it. And if you really think it's worthwhile, please consider donating. This helps me to have time to create more videos and might even buy me a beer. So I wanted to quickly talk about the pros and cons of each of these builds very quickly. Uh, and then I'll talk about some future builds that I plan on doing. So first thing to note is the bleed damage is actually not affected by skill tier or skill damage. Those will affect the initial hit. So in the case of the Seeker Mine, the initial explosion will do more damage. Uh, but it will not cause your bleed to do any more damage nor last longer. That is all based on status effects. So there's a couple ways that you can use that to your advantage. I will most likely get into that in future videos. Another big one to note is the damage is snapshot. The status effect damage is snapshot at the time of impact. So that means if you have procced overcharge, uh, if you've procced... Uh, Perfect example is the perfectly combined arms. If you're in overcharge and you proc perfectly combined arms, let's say you have the future initiative ground control active and you have empathic resolve. You proc your perpetuation and your status effect hits while all of those are proc. You start bleeding. Every single one of those buffs can deactivate and you will not lose any damage. The only thing that I have found, and let comment below if you found something else, the only thing that I've found that will actually affect the damage over time is if you switch the amount of damage to armor on a particular weapon uh, while the bleed is already in effect. This is also true with burn and other, any other sort of damage over time status effect I've found so far in the game. So far in all of my testing, you guys probably have seen the overcharge does not seem to benefit status effects in any way it only seems to benefit the actual skill damage just like skill damage on gear and skill tier tend to do so do not expect to see any higher bleed numbers because of the overcharge so for every variation of these builds creeping death is actually redundant as every form of bleed is an area of effect the explosive seeker mines explodes in a radius. The shrapnel traps spread everywhere and they have an explosive radius each. The stinger hive is obviously an area of effect and the artillery turret has a huge area of effect. Now creeping death can be of great effect if you are running with the ridgeway, you wanna spread that bleed to everybody. If you are running the hollow point ammo and you want to spread the hollow point ammo bleed around or if you're running the trauma chest piece for some reason. Overall, and this is just my opinion, while this is cool and I will use this build anytime I need to get bleed uh, directives done, the reality is for all intents and purposes, burn is a better perk. It seems to hit harder on the initial impact. It seems to burn significantly stronger. Uh, it, the, most of the cooldown times are quicker on the burn variations. Uh, the only caveat is the burn is an easier way to kill yourself. If you're within the radius, you're basically immediately dead. The high end is cool. You get the maximum damage with that one. The uh, Eclipse Protocol is awesome. You spread a lot of status effects around. Is a really easy gameplay style. If you want to run around and shoot guys, the ongoing directive is awesome. I think all of these are fun. I've literally used all of them for uh, at least 10 floors of the summit. All of them work great. Uh, quickly, I'll talk about what my next build variations as far as testing a little bit more of this bleed goes. I do want to try the Hexotic build variation and see what the gameplay is like when we have the Memento built up to 30 stacks. Uh, in addition, I want to try the Eclipse Protocol with one golden piece and running the Memento. And then the other one I want to try to do, since the bleed damage is not buffed or affected in any way by skill tier, I'm going to do a full ongoing directive build with the memento backpack and one gl so that will net me two armor that will run net me five weapon core uh as well as one skill tier actually technically two skill tier if we're running the technician if we couple this with either the carnage so that we're doing plenty plus 25 percent bonus damage to every bleeding enemy couple with the scorpio uh that way we'll be adding status effects to every enemy including a significant bleed or what I think will be really fun is to try that out with the Pestilence because Pestilence uh, debuff, uh, that damage over time is based solely on weapon damage. 
Uh, and we are talking about pumping out significant weapon damage between the Memento and the fact that we will have five weapon cores. If you guys are interested, stay tuned. I, if any of those builds is viable, I will definitely uh, create an updated video on it or maybe a standalone video if one of them is just so powerful that I got to show it to you guys. Anyway, thank you so much. Again, guys, smash that like button. Subscribe if you haven't. You guys be safe out there. I'll see you agents in the dark zone. Thank <laughs> you.